It's been said and often proved that not everything that happens in reality is exciting enough for adaptation on its own, often requiring artistic license to dramatise events in order to make them more appealing to a wider audience – see The Crazy Eights and Unstoppable to get what I'm talking about. But once in a while, metaphorical lightning appears to strike in a bottle, and on this occasion it appears to have been captured in a way that most writers just couldn't make up. My point being, the miracle of LTC Rolt's Railway Adventure is that it plays out like a work of fiction, yet the events that took place all really happened in a way that nobody at the time could have perceived possible. We take railway preservation run by gangs of volunteers as second nature to us now, but back in the early 1950s it was seen as a bit of an alien concept. The Talatlin Railway in Gwynedd, North Wales was run into the ground after years of dwindling traffic, until the line's owner, Sir Henry Hayden Jones, died in 1950. It caught the eye of one Lionel Thomas Caswell Rolt, a writer and founder of the Inland Waterways Association, who walked the line one day after services had been cancelled. Captivated by this 1860s piece of Welsh narrow-gauge history, Rolt was inspired to form the Talatlin Railway Preservation Society, who would commence public operation of the line using volunteer labour in 1951. But little did he know of the trials and tribulations he and his dedicated maniacs would face in the coming years of the line's new lease of life, one that in no small part inspired the railway preservation scene as we know it today. Rolt's adventure really begins in Chapter 2, with its predecessor establishing the line and going into its history. More comprehensive coverage of the line's life before World War II has been penned since Railway Adventure, but there's enough here for you to appreciate the sort of life the railway had up until that point. However, it's only when Rolt comes into the story that things get really interesting. The anecdotes that are passed down through the time show a balance of comedy and tragedy, such as one where the overhead crane in Pendria Works was found very heavy to operate when trying to lift number one Talathlin's water tank off the loco, the subsequent bend in the apparatus being a result of discovering that the volunteers were in fact trying to lift the whole engine. It so happens that the poor condition of number one means the engine is more or less sidelined for most of the story as the two former Chorus Railway engines arrive on the scene. Hughes Falcon No. 3 infamously refused to stay on the rails during her induction, what with the track itself being in such disrepair and the engine so unused to such a run that Rolt recalls her managing one successful trip before things started to go wrong and Reliance fell back on the geriatric No. 2 Dolgoch. You may have seen events from Railway Adventure adapted by Tibby Clark for the Tipfield Thunderbolt and by the Reverend Wilbur Daudry for Elements of the Railway series, which further testifies how much like a work of fiction this book feels. But the details help to flesh it out to great effect. For instance, in the event that inspired Audrey's gallant old engine in 1962, Dolgoch did indeed have to return to base on just one cylinder following damage to the valve gear halfway through a journey up the line. But in the event of refunds being offered to passengers falling short of their destination, not one of them demanded reimbursement, and the damage to the valve gear was caused by a fault so small it was almost comical. Repairs were made in time for the engine to run again the following day, only for yet another breakdown to take place. If you haven't had a chance to read Railway Adventure, it's at least worth a look just to see the stark contrast of railway preservation as an alien concept in the early 50s compared to the absurdly oversaturated commercial scene we take for granted today. It's a unique, enthralling, eloquent account of material that fiction novelists could only dream of inventing. It's been printed time and again down the years and will no doubt continue to inspire future generations of railway enthusiasts who rise through the ranks a must-have for anybody interested in steam railway history and preservation. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you liked what you hear and you'd like to see more on the channel, then feel free to like, share, subscribe, discuss, contribute to my Patreon, and check out my range of merchandise at www.egmedia.co.uk forward slash shop. See you next time.